is, I think this is all about it. We need to be aware that this is no philanthropy anymore. This is something that will sustain us and keep us safe. Not to speak about too many topics because of course we can speak about politician, economy, but I would go for education. So let me say that I'm very happy, honored, and quite um, impressed that I have you over here in this podcast in The Good Stories, because, um, well, obviously you are somebody who has founded an NGO, and your NGO is all about something that surrounds us in Greece. It's about the ocean, the sea, basically. And it's called Octopus. So Lola Otter, thank you so very much for being here. And um, I want to know everything about your journey. Thank you, Elpida, for having me in your amazing uh, podcast. Um, so yeah, of course, we can speak about my organization. Uh, we are based in uh, Strasbourg, where we don't have the ocean. So that's uh, exactly what uh, we would like to promote. The idea that uh, even if you're living far away from the ocean, you can have a solution and you can take action to restore it and uh, to tackle different type of uh, pollution that you can find uh, in the ocean or seas uh, in general. Can you please tell me more about... What made you, how you arrived? Because I know that you're trained as a lawyer, as my initial journey has been as well, and how you actually like came to love so much the sea that you actually decided to create this project. Um, actually, you're right. I'm quite uh, connected to Greece because uh, as a humanitarian lawyer, I started to work uh, in Greece. Um, I was uh, working in a refugee camp um, that was called Doliana Camp. It was not far away from uh, Yanina in the mountain, also uh, close to Albania. Uh, and there I was like uh, confronted to the pollution that... Um, all the plastic bottles that uh, were sent um, created there and there was like no way of uh, recycling uh, all those uh, waste uh, in the mountain so i started to realize that um, our consumption was a very big problem uh, also in uh, greece i realized that uh, on some island like uh, Corfu, the island that i was uh, visiting during the weekend you couldn't uh, drink like water from the tap so you had to buy a plastic bottle in uh, france uh, where i come from we don't have uh, this uh, problem although lots of people they continue to buy um plastic bottle. So yeah, at some point I realized that uh, first of all, we have to raise awareness about uh, those uh, kind of uh, issues. And then uh, we have to be able to share also solution. And uh, that's why that's what we are doing with uh, Octopus. Okay. I think there is a beautiful journey that you spoke to me also about, like, you know, falling in love with the sea, actually, when you lived in the Caribbean. So I think that you also, since you're well, French, basically, you are connected to these islands. So would you like to tell me more about this, you know, particular journey and how you came to also, like, realize what we're missing? Of course. So um, after I realized uh, in Greece uh, by working in a refugee camp that uh, plastic pollution was a, a big problem and that we had to find a solution for it, I went on a mission in the Caribbean and there I completely felt in love with the sea marine biodiversity. Martinique is a French island, even though it's like really far away from, yes. <laughs> from Paris and everything we know. Also in the Med Sea, we don't have uh, so much uh, coral reef. We only have like a few of them. Um, while in uh, the Caribbean, the biodiversity is... Um, 
really, um, I mean, uh, more diverse. And that's uh, how I decided in the end to change my uh, career. And from a um, humanitarian lawyer to uh, dive into the law of the sea uh, with the idea of um, sharing what I discovered. So uh, why coral reef uh, matters, why it's important to protect them. Uh, even if in uh, the Mediterranean Sea, we don't have uh, so much biodiversity, but uh, still they're important and yeah, all of this, uh, we find it in the three pillars of uh, Octopus because we raise awareness, uh, we organize a cleaning action and uh, we recycle uh, different kind of uh, waste uh, such as plastic, but uh, also textile and um, a lot of stuff. Actually, we have a small local uh, recycling hub. And last but not least, we work on uh, artificial coral reef in the med. And for now, uh, our first one is in Corfu. So in Oh my God. Okay. First of all, I need you to um, define what is a coral reef because many people do not actually know what it is. But this is like, I think, very, very important. And also like, I want to shoot you with numerous questions right now about what they're doing, you know, like the um, companies that they're looking like for basically for energy and the petrol and, you know, all those, those things. So I think that you have like knowledge when it comes to these things as well. So like, let's talk a little bit more about, you know, what's happening, you know. So to start with the first question, what is a coral reef? So um, a coral reef is the natural habitat of corals. And uh, a coral is a mix between uh, an animal, um, vegetal, I don't know how you <laughs> translate this, uh, and a mineral. So it's really hybrid. Most of uh, the people, they don't know that a coral is actually an animal. But uh, it is, and uh, that's why it's like really interesting to dive into um, what is a coral, because um, most of the people, they know coral when they die. So this image when you have like blight, bl um, white corals, it's actually yes. when uh, they are dead. And this um, white uh, image uh, that uh, you have is actually the skeleton because the animal, when it grows, it, he builds its own skeleton. And when uh, it uh, dies, then uh, you only have uh, this uh, removing. Uh, yeah, this remaining. white, yes, this white remnants, basically. Exactly. So that's the skeleton uh, of uh, the coral. And that's what we want to avoid. Yes. We want it to be alive. We want it to be colorful, like the images that uh, you can have uh, on the internet that you don't find in the Med Sea because the water is not uh, warm enough. Uh, but like, uh, yeah, in the, the Caribbean or also in uh, Indonesia, Australia, you have like a huge biodiversity. And what does this say about the ocean? What does this say about the water If you, when you actually have like life? over there it's really interesting because it helps on so many um, topics that would be like really too long to mention them but first of all uh, it can protect uh, the sea coast uh, to avoid like uh, tsunamis or like really to protect uh, the coast then it's also a habitat for um, fishes so it increases uh, the, the food that uh, fishermen can actually get. Uh, it's also really helpful for the medicine to fight against a cancer. And also it brings oxygen to the um, ocean, so to the planet in uh, general. So actually thanks to a coral reef, um, it, it allows us to, to breathe. So yeah, it sustains basically life in the sea and outside of the sea. Okay, yes. I get it. <laughs> So, yeah. I want to say how to ask, um, how um, far away are we from actually like saying that we are protecting now life in the ocean? Please don't tell me we're like uh, the kilometers of light away. Um, what I can tell you is that if we don't do anything or if we continue to act like we do at the moment in 2030 
So in about six years, we are going to lose 99% of the coral reef in the world, uh, which is a very bad news. I'm sorry. I, okay. And what is, in your experience, what is like the biggest <clears throat> threat to it? So would you say it's like, okay, let's say pollution. Yes. But when we say we talk about pollution, we talk about like nowadays, like many ways of pollution. So what would be the biggest threat actually over there? And how would this biggest threat, let's say, try to incorporate tools in order to not be such a big threat? Uh In order not to speak about too many topics, because of course we can speak about politician, economy, but I would go for education. I believe that if uh, people knew about why we need the ocean, what is a coral reef and small action that they can take, um, we can actually make a change and try to have like healthy ocean. So I really believe in um, education and what we call low-tech solution, because before we were talking on what is a coral reef, but what we do with octopus is artificial coral reef. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like permaculture, so yes. we create like structure. And then uh, we go and find uh, like pieces of coral that um, um, were um, that are not on the natural habitat anymore because of divers, because of boats, because of uh, yeah the the weather. So then we can put them on those like artificial uh, reefs in order for them to grow, and then we put them back to the natural habitats in order for them to survive. So um, we call also those people like coral gardeners, and that's exactly um, similar to, to permaculture. So you have actually a lot of way uh, to act, and you don't have to be close to the sea, you don't have to be a diver, you even don't have to have an interest on it, because for instance, the local recycling hub that uh, we are running, Some people, they are just dealing with waste because they want to make money out of it. Because plastic in the beginning uh, has a value, uh, was a revolution for like many fields. But now with uh, our society and uh, our habits, the single-use plastic is a big, big uh, issue. I mean, we don't need, for instance, to put like five straws in a glass we can like... Yeah, just take the glass and drink. So. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know it's like the overconsumption of things actually like creates like, you know, has taken a huge toll actually on like everything that has to do with sustainability, with nature. And not many people understand that you don't have to actually like do it um, for free, you know, for, you know, as a philanthrop, as a um, part of your philanthropy, let's say. But you can actually, like, this is all about circular economy. Actually, it allows you to be more aware of your actions. It allows you to give back and receive back as well. So it's more like a part of, you know, a culture that is actually changing right now and saying, you know what, as in Enable Good, for example, when we talk about sustainability, we don't want to be taking pretty pictures. You know, we want you For example, if I have like a big company or a shipping company or somebody who also aligns, you know, and resonates with your values to be able to actually participate in this and get something back out of it. Because this is, I think this is all about it. We need to be aware that this is no philanthropy anymore. This is something that will sustain us and keep us safe. Exactly. Like for me, I really think that uh, now with uh, all the social media and all the information that we get uh, everywhere, in the end, we are completely disconnected, disconnected with the nature, disconnected uh, with uh, our um, environment, sometimes even with uh, our families, friends. And uh, it's really important to just like step back and see what is uh, around us. And I do understand that sometimes like you have to to work and you can work for a big company that maybe those uh, not things like really great, 
but uh, still like on your uh, daily life you can take uh, habits you can say no to single use plastic have a reusable uh, bottle uh, maybe support an organization do i don't know um cleaning uh, action during the weekend or even if you're not into it just by uh, also um, going for slow travel or you know you have like so many way of taking action that uh, education is uh, what matters the most because if you don't know what you can do then there is no way for you or your company to to take action or support people who are actually doing good. I think that's very, very important. And I think it's also like something that has to do, they call it international development goals. Uh, but I think it's, you know, more about what we personally do and how we take care of ourselves by also giving back. And on this note, I really want to thank you for being here on this like teeny tiny journey with me. Well, it lasted actually one month, <laughs> but, you know, I am very grateful that we are able actually to give back to each other, to learn, you know, amazing things from each other, to also be able to share our skill sets with each other. And it has been a great honor 